video, we're going to finish um, book two of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, studying chapter nine of book two. I'm going to read through the chapter. I'll make comments as I feel uh, it would be helpful for students making their first reading. And then I'll leave you to get to your studies and wrap up this chapter. So let's read together chapter nine of book two of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Chapter 9. That ethical virtue therefore is a medium, and how it is so, and that it is a medium between two vices, the one existing according to excess, but the other according to defect, and that it is such in consequence of looking to the medium in passions and actions as to a mark or target to aim at, has been sufficiently shown in the previous chapters. Hence also, it is laborious, it is laborious, it's difficult work to be worthy or to be good. It is laborious to be worthy. For in everything, it is laborious, difficult, to obtain the middle. Thus, the middle of a circle cannot be discovered by everyone, but by him who is skilled in geometry. In like manner, to be angry and to give and spend money is in the power of everyone and is easy. But to be angry and to give and spend money to whom and as much and when and on what account, and as it is proper, cannot be accomplished by everyone, nor is it easy. For this is to act rightly, and is rare, and laudable, praiseworthy, and beautiful. Hence it is necessary that he whose attention is directed to the medium as to a mark should first recede from that which is more contrary. So here, Aristotle gives us sort of a practical piece of advice with regard to how to do this. He tells us, finding the medium and practicing virtue is laborious. It's very difficult. And now we start to move to some practical advice, because like Aristotle said, the goal is not for us to know what virtue is, but to actually become good men. So now the question for us is, okay, okay, I understand, but how do I do this? How do I actually practice virtue? How do I find the medium? It's difficult to find the medium. And Aristotle gives us some practical advice here. He says, um, it is necessary that he whose attention is directed to the medium as to a mark should first recede from that which is more contrary. So in the last chapter he explained to us how one extreme may actually be more contrary to the middle than the other. Here he tells us how to, how to begin the pursuit of the middle. We should first recede or move away from that extreme which is more contrary. So as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, we should choose first as we get started. We should choose to err on the side of that vice which is less contrary to the virtue. We should err on that side of the, of the, of the middle which is less contrary to it, all right? So for example, we said that if you talk about temperance, intemperance is more contrary to temperance than insensibility. So the first thing that we should do if we desire to be temperate is move ourselves away from intemperance and not worry so much about insensibility because it's less likely that we're going to err in that direction. But we're, because we're inclined to intemperance, we're inclined to too much pursuit of pleasure, too much desire for pleasure. The way to begin seeking the middle 
is to remove ourselves from that extreme which is more contrary to it, which would be intemperance. So we might impose upon ourselves a strict rule of temperance, maybe even too strict, but that's necessary for us to recede from the more contrary extreme. Okay, or with regard to bravery, because timidity is more contrary to bravery than audacity. We may want to challenge ourselves and force ourselves to go too far rather than too little and err on the side of timidity, which is more contrary to bravery. Aristotle goes on to say, <clears throat> It is necessary that he whose attention is directed to the medium as to a mark should first recede from that which is more contrary, as Calypso also admonishes. Far from the snow, smoke and waves direct the helm. For of the extremes, the one indeed is more erroneous. Of the two extreme vices, one is more erroneous, one is worse but the other is less erroneous and not as bad. Since, therefore, it is difficult to obtain the medium accurately, by making a second navigation, as they say, the least of the evils must be assumed. But this will especially be effected in the way we have mentioned. It is, likely, it is likewise requisite to consider what the vices are to which we individually, well, we as, as human beings, first of all, generally, and also we individually are most propense or most inclined. For different men are naturally prone to different vices. But this will be known from the pleasure and pain with which we are affected. Notice how this study is leading us into the, the importance of self-examination. We have to know ourselves, and that's why one of the, uh, the principles of ancient wisdom and philosophy was know thyself. We have to study ourselves. We have to know ourselves through self-examination, paying attention to our behavior, to our thoughts and our feelings. We have to get to know which vices we're more inclined to, because we have to fight against them more aggressively. We may be naturally inclined to a certain virtue, and yet we may be naturally inclined to, a, to another vice, whereas the person next to us may be inclined to different vices. And we also have to be careful not to judge others, because just because someone else is inclined to a certain vice that you're not inclined to, you're likely inclined to vices that they're not inclined to. I can give you an example from my own life. Um, I grew up playing sports in a family that ate a lot of food. I'm inclined to intemperance or to gluttony um, because of my, my lifestyle when I was a kid, when I grew up, how I ate, how I looked at food and so on. I'm inclined to gluttony and I have to fight very hard to live and eat temperately. It's a constant battle for me that I have to I have to make conscious effort of. And yet, I have no um, inclination at all to being a sluggard or sleeping. I have, I have very little interest in sleep. So I'm not inclined to sluggishness, but I am inclined to gluttony. My wife, on the other hand, um, is very temperate. She would, she would more likely go a day without eating at all than ever eat too much. She's inclined to temperance with regard to food, and yet she enjoys sleep. So the two of us have these opposite inclinations. I'm inclined more to an intemperance in eating or to an excess of eating. My wife is inclined to an excess of sleeping. I have no interest in sleeping, and my wife has no interest most of the time in eating. And so it's an, it's an example of two people are inclined 
to different vices and really don't struggle with other vices. And that's how people are. And we have to be careful not to judge others because they're weak in things that we're strong. Because we'll find that we're weak in things that they're strong. And we can't pick and choose which virtues and vices are the ones that count and which ones, you know, the ones that we struggle with, we say, well, they're not important. Because that's not true, right? Different people are prone to different vices. But this will be known from the pleasure and pain with which we are affected. We ought, however, to draw ourselves to the contrary part, for by removing ourselves very far from error, we shall arrive at the medium, which those do who straighten distorted pieces of wood. So he gives us an illustration here. If there's a piece of wood that's warped, how do we make it straight? We don't bend it back until it's straight and then stop. It's inclined to be bent in a certain way. And therefore, to make it straight, we bend it back beyond straightness to make it curve in the opposite direction so that when it relaxes, it comes back to straight, to the medium. Okay? And he says, in the same way, we have to control ourselves. We're like a distorted piece of wood that needs to be made straight. We don't just bend it back until it's straight. We bend it beyond straightness and let it then return to the medium. And we have to do the same thing with ourselves because of our inclinations. But in everything, we should especially avoid the delectable and pleasure. In everything, we should especially avoid the delectable, that which is delightful, and pleasure. For we are not uncorrupted judges of it. We are not uncorrupted judges of it. In the same manner, therefore, as the Trojan nobles were affected towards Helen, we ought to be affected towards pleasure. And in everything where pleasure is concerned, to employ their decision. For thus, by dismissing it, we shall err in less degree. By thus acting, therefore, in short, we shall be especially able to obtain the medium. Perhaps, however, this is difficult, and principally in particulars, for it is not easy to determine how and with whom and on what account and for how long a time it is requisite to be angry. It's very difficult to figure out how to be angry properly. For we indeed sometimes praise those who are defective in anger, and we call them mild. But at other times we praise those who are exasperated, and we call them virile or manly. He, however, who deviates but a little from rectitude, from what is right, whether he inclines to the more or to the less, is not blamed. But he who deviates much from it, for the error of such a one is not latent. It cannot, however, be easily determined to what extent and how much he is blamable, as neither is this easy in any other sensible thing. But things of this kind rank among particulars, and the judgment of them pertains to sense. Thus much, therefore, is indeed manifest, that the middle habit is in all things laudable, praiseworthy, and that it is necessary at one time to incline to excess, and at another it is necessary to incline to deficiency. For thus we shall easily obtain the medium and rectitude or rightness of conduct. And that's the end of both chapter 9 and of book 2. So here we have an important principle that helps us in our life. Um, while virtue is a medium between two opposite vices, knowing, knowing the vices 
And having an idea of the medium or the virtue is one thing, but actually living and acting according to that medium is something else. It's, it's something that's laborious, as Aristotle says, difficult. And one of the reasons why it's especially difficult is because we have natural inclinations to different vices. And therefore, we have to keep this illustration of the piece of curved wood always in mind. That in order to make ourselves straight or right, we have to bend ourselves past the medium in our effort to attain the medium. And so when we look at the lives of saints, we'll often find them doing this. We'll often find them taking measures to overcome vices and sins by going beyond what is considered uh, the medium. For example, we'll read about St. Catherine of Siena sleeping on, stone, sleeping on a stone floor. And we may say, well, that's a bit, that's extreme. She's going too far. And yet, in her particular situation, remember, she's the judge. She knows her own inclinations and weaknesses. And she may find that she's inclined to sluggishness, to too much desire for sleep. And so to discipline herself and force herself uh, to practice the middle, the virtue, she has to go beyond that middle. She can't allow herself a comfortable bed. She can't allow herself a thick, soft blanket or a, a soft, plush pillow because it would, it would lead her too much in that vice which she's inclined to, which is, which is to sleep too much. And so to discipline herself and to seek the middle, she bends herself beyond the middle and sleeps on the stone floor instead to take away the comfort of the bed and make it easier for her to get up at the proper time, to sleep with moderation. We see her take that practical measure in order to reach the medium. We can do the same thing in our own lives. We must do the same things in our own lives if we're to be virtuous. We have to study each of the virtues and vices as we go through this book. And then we have to examine ourselves and ask, how can we reach the middle? Some things may be easier because we lack an inclination to that extreme which is worse. But some things may be very difficult for us and we may need to take extreme measures going beyond the middle and understanding that it's not too much for us to do so, but it's necessary for us to do so because of our individual inclinations and weaknesses. And so that's, I hope, a helpful introduction to chapter 9. And as I said, that concludes um, our study of book 2 in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Time for you to get to work with your studies, complete the lesson assessment to prove that you've mastered the content of the lesson and submit that to me for review. Um, as I always say, these videos are made available freely, but they're intended for students who are enrolled in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. And therefore, I look forward to uh, seeing your assessment work and reviewing it uh, so that I can have a sense that that you understand the content of the lessons and can move forward. Um, I hope that's a helpful introduction. God bless your studies.